Yo, how's everybody doing? Uh, welcome to Tall Garage. Today we're going to be talking about the Ford 300 and how I messed up. But first I want to remind you all guys that we have a Facebook page. We have a Facebook group and I have an Instagram which I don't use. But make sure you guys uh, check the links below and go check them out. Also, I have a Patreon. Uh, who's going to be my first Patreon? Huh? Huh? Uh, it would really help with uh, progress on things, but as always, all you gotta do to support me is just like and share my videos and subscribe. So, let's get on with the video. Alright everybody, time for a little bit of an update, I suppose. Uh, we're going to talk about the Ford 300 I got sitting here with the LS head. So we finally uh, got the head cut at the machine shop and we were able to bolt it on and finally measure for push rods. Um, there we're gonna use nine inch. That's that's what I come to the conclusion. We're gonna try nine inch long push rods. That's that's what we decided on. They had to cut the head eighty thousand to get it straight. So that's where we're at. Nine inch push rods. Uh, so that was the good news. Now we have some bad news that uh, we're gonna talk about, and some more updates on other things. So yeah, here we go. So, all right, so I, I'm i gonna go into a little detail on how I measure for the push rods. This probably isn't the best way, this is the way I decided to do it. Uh, Richard Holdner, if you don't know him, I'll have a link to the video. He did a video on measuring uh, LS push rods. And it, and it took me a while to like grasp the concept of what he was trying to do. But I realized, uh, it worked for this application. So he, he uses what he calls the turn method. And uh, you, you put uh, your, your rockers on, which I uh, got right here. And all I did, uh, I just took an LS, the stock LS rail, chopped two cylinders off of it, bolts right in. But you, 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 t you uh, tighten it down um, uh, with two fingers on a, uh, on a driver like this, so you would you tighten the bolt on the rocker. So that's this guy right right here or well, right there. Tighten it down two fingers to, to you know to, to it stops right. So just just when it stops and you can't put any more ever out with two fingers. And then you take a ratchet and you count the number of turns. So he did it with a stock LS push rod, and I want to say he measured one, two. And a quarter, so a turn and a quarter before the rocker seated, right? And so that that sets your preload and with, with how long your uh, push rod is. So what I did is since stock LS push rods uh, seat after so many turns, I copied that exactly. I made my adjustable push rod longer until I, I got the exact same amount of turns as um, a stock LS push rod would on a stock LS. So that, and that sets your preload on your lifter. And I'm doing some research. It looks like the preload on these lifters and on the LS lifter is about the same. 80 thousandths max on them, on these, and then the LS uh, stock preload is like 75 thousandths, right? So real close. So that should be close. It came out to, it came out, well, it came out to a sixteenth of an inch less than nine inches. Uh, but we're just going to round up nine inches. So it's hopefully, hopefully that's fine. Maybe, it, maybe it won't. I don't know, but that's how I did it. Go watch this video. He explains it way better than I did. This video is about, uh, how I messed up. All right. So we bolted, the head onto the block um, so we can measure push rods. And when I bolted the head on the block, I just used the, uh, the washers that came with the stud kit uh, that I used to bolt the head on. And that was where, <laughs> that was where the mistake was made. So the sleeves in the two center bolt holes, they failed. And they failed because I used too small of a washer. Uh, you can see that they're protruding out a little bit on each one. Uh, yeah, and that's because I used too small of a washer. Uh, so that sucks. Um, it needs fixed, 
obviously. So that's kind of where I'm at now. If I was going to do it again, I would still sleeve it. I'm still pro sleeves. Sleeves seem like the best way to do it. But I would probably make like top hats, you know? So it would still be a three quarters of an inch slug. And we'd still drill to the center of it. But I think I'd leave a lip at the top of the head, about sixteenths of an inch. Um, so, and then I'd uh, machine the top of the bore uh, for, for recess. So when scrunching these down, uh, one, you wouldn't have to use bigger washers and it would give, uh, it'd give a little, so it wouldn't want to pull through the block when you didn't, right? So yeah, that's kind of a bummer. So I've been thinking on ways to fix it. Obviously those need fixed. I mean, on the bright side, you, you can see, uh, like there was penetration all around the sleeves, you know, so it would have been watertight. It would have worked if I just would have used bigger washers, but I didn't. So we got to figure out how to uh, fix this, and uh, we can't really cut the deck again. I mean, we could, but we already cut it a lot. I don't want to cut it anymore. So unfortunately, I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to shell out the money to have the whole gasket surface welded up at least a quarter of an inch. That might be a lot. I don't know if we can do a quarter of an inch. A quarter of an inch is a lot. <laughs> but we need to have the whole gasket surface welded up. And uh, then we're going to have to have it recut. And that, that's pretty much all I can really think of is how to do it. Which, you know, is unfortunate. But So a couple other things why uh, we have the head off. So I obviously, you know, I bolted the head on. So I can kind of see where the gasket is set. And this water jacket and this water jacket and the two at the bottom of the head are a little close to the firing for comfort, right? So I'm going to take, I guess, this opportunity when I have the whole gasket service welded up is I'm going to uh, have this water jacket and the one on the other side uh, closed up about halfway and then this one and the one on the other side I'm just gonna have uh, straightened out so it's more of a slot instead of this shape right here so we'll get rid of we'll get rid of this protrusion right here so like I said a little close to the firing on the gasket I uh, last thing I would want is water getting into the um the cylinder through that uh, but other than that, like I said, everything looked beautiful. Like, uh, everything lines up great. It would have been watertight. <laughs> everything is going really well. And like I said, I just, I, I didn't think about it. I used two small washers. If I would have used bigger washers, this never would have happened. So, bummer, huh? But anyway, I'm making these mess up so you don't, right? So, like I said, what we've learned from this. Um, if you just use plain sleeves, bigger washers... Like I said, I'm gonna, next time I do it, I'm going to make top hats, basically upside down top hats, right? So they have a rim, so that, and that rim is going to have a recess that's going to press into. Uh, so it will have more surface area and won't just push straight through the head. So that's what we're going to do there. And then we also learned that, we should, that you should probably make these water ports and the ones down there at the bottom a little smaller because they get kind of close to the firing. So yeah. So, like I said... Uh, if you guys have any other suggestions on how to fix this, let me know. But that's kind of where I'm at. Um, on the bright side, I suppose, uh, if I could get these to suck back up into the head, uh, from looking at the gasket, the gasket would actually seal uh, this up. So that is to say, if these didn't have enough penetration from weld and they did seep, the gasket would actually seal these, or it should seal these. So that was kind of like my backup plan. Like if this didn't hold, you know, if these did leak. So, I mean, we could still try putting it together like this. Uh, we'd obviously have to like try to like get these to pull back up in the head so they're not protruding so much. And, uh, you know, maybe put a bunch of copper gasket on it. <sighs> so, I don't know. Tell me what you guys want to see. Do you want me to uh, have the whole thing welded up and fixed? Or should we just like uh, continue on and at least see if we can get it running?
right? So I have one other thing. I have one other thing I want to show uh, on camera before we cut this video off. And I don't think I've shown it uh, on video yet. So let me go grab that and we'll look at it real quick. So some of you may have seen the pictures that I posted on the community tab of the intake uh, being done. But here it is in all of its glory. And like I said, it was just that, uh, that LS intake that I got from uh, eBay or AliExpress that I had cut up and sectioned. And like I said, it all came, it all came together really well. This uh, one piece uh, fitted to cover up that side. And uh, the piece down there at the bottom, and then we use the end cap from the other intake. But it, it just looks, it looks fabulous. And I test fitted it, and or I test fit it, and it fit, it fit great. Like the the ports line up as well as they did from the factory, which isn't really saying much, you know. So there's still gonna be some tweaking to the fit. Um, we actually might have to fill and re-drill uh, the holes because when, and, and it did this from the get-go, but when, when we bolt it up tight to the head, it wants to pull down uh, so like the ports aren't lined up right. Like it'd still run. Like I have no doubt, like there wouldn't be a leak or anything, it'd still run, but just there's a good chunk of the port being covered up and I don't, I don't think that would be, you know, conducive to good flow, you know what I'm saying? Um, so the only other uh, custom part that needs to be made is the uh, push rod cover, the lifter cover that goes on the side of the block. Um, and I might get some footage of that here in a little bit, but uh, we're making a, uh, it's gonna be three or four pieces that you weld together. We're making it in SolidWorks. It's gonna be out of aluminum. And when I get it all figured out, I will be offering them to you guys uh, to purchase uh, once I, you know, get all the kinks worked out of it. So, like I said, uh, I might have some footage of that, and if I do, I'll put it at the end here. So, uh, you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you all later. Alright, I'm back. I wanted to show you guys more of the intake instead of just the little bit that I did, right? Uh, so like I said, most of you would have seen this all cut up uh, in multiple pieces sitting on my workbench. Now it's all one piece again. Um, but yeah, it came together pretty much exactly how I thought it would. Uh, there's an extra cut there because uh, I'm a dork and I started cutting it on the wrong side. But yeah, uh, the guy who did the rest of the fab work and the welding uh, burning wire fab. I'll put a link to uh, his page below. So you know, if you guys um, are you know in the Ohio area, or uh, you want him to like make uh, you an intake, that might be something he'd be interested in. So you can get a hold of him. But like I said, it came out. It came out fabulous. I have no complaints. It looks it looks great. As long as it fits in the car, <laughs> that's kind of like the only thing uh, I was worried about making it this big is, is it going to fit alongside the engine? But it should, the, the runners are pretty short, so it's not, not no big long thing. Um, but like I said, it was pretty, came out, it came out pretty well. Like I said, uh, we used the end cap from the original intake. So it was really just, just this piece right here and then this piece back here. And he, he did a fantastic job. Uh, he's a great fellow. Like I said, that's burning wire fab. And I will have a link to him below. Um, but yeah, we did keep uh, these ports for... Uh, what were we going to put these ports? We got uh, vacuum ports, uh, boost reference ports. Uh, we got the map sensor port. So we got all the ports for anything we could need. And... Uh, and uh, we, we we do have a throttle body for it. Actually, you know what? Let me let me go grab go grab it. Don't don't mind the mess. Oh, ah ah, there it is. This guy right here. This uh, G plus G 
two plus throttle body uh, will be going on it. So and you can see the size of that thing. Like I can, pretty good size, huh? Damn near fit my fist in the thing. But yeah, so that will be going on there, right? And uh, I might. Oh, you know, I didn't think about that. I'll probably have to like tack on a. Uh, uh, tack on something to hold the throttle cable on. So, but you know, that'll be easy to do. I can probably do that with my little TIG welder. I can probably tack on a racket, so that's no big deal. Um, so if you do, and like I said, I, I talked about this a little bit uh, when I was cutting this thing up, but these ports are, are horrible. Like there's this, this big lip right there on each side. You have like every one of these. Big lip, like so I'll have to get in there with the sand rolls and the burrs and and smooth out and tra make that a nice transition, you know. And then, uh, like I said, these holes might have to be redrilled. Um, because when you tighten it up, it wants to pull the intake down and then part of the head intake runner is like, like this is sitting below it, right? So... Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of janky. We'll get her figured out. We'll get her figured out. But yeah, that, that is the intake. So I hope you guys... Like, it, it looks so much better in person. Like, it's just, it's, just, it's just so great. It's just a piece. It's just literally a piece. It's great. Here at Tall Garage, we make all our own parts in-house for all of your custom Ford 300 LS needs.